Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and our Simple Abundance year. And happy belated Thanksgiving, if that's a holiday that you celebrate. We are following through Sarah Von Bronick's book, Simple Abundance, this year. And today I am going to be talking about a few of her November entries that are related to Thanksgiving and being grateful and thinking about the blessings that we have in our lives. I am predominantly going to be talking about the 2019 edition that we've been going through this year together, uh, but I am going to pull a, a topic or two from the older book that are uh, entries that were not included in the new book, at least not in this section. They might be in another place later in the year, although we're almost at the end of the year. Thank you for being here with me. On this channel, we're discussing Sarah's principles, joy, harmony, beauty, order, simplicity, and gratitude. And Thanksgiving, right? It's all about gratitude. I was watching a YouTube channel that I follow. It's somebody over in the UK, and she doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving in the American way, but she calls it gratitude day and she still observes it in, in another way. And I thought that was, that was neat because I think as Americans, the food is just such a big thing of Thanksgiving, isn't it? I heard that, that there was sort of a shortage of small turkeys this year because some of the family gatherings were going to be a little bit smaller. So I hope whatever you did that you were filled with gratitude, whether you were at a big gathering or a small gathering. And so let's talk about some of the things that you might have thought of when you were thinking about gratitude. She has two entries in the new book. One is called The Blessing of Friends and the other one is called The Blessing of Good Health. Did you think about those things when you thought about the things that you're grateful for? Probably friends came to mind, but I don't know that we are so apt to be thankful for good health on a regular basis, although that should be something that we should be grateful for. I was having some perspective because last year, at this time, I had had surgery earlier in November of last year, and I couldn't, I still couldn't even walk at this point. Um, I was really, really in a lot of pain and uncomfortable and just very sad and alone and so even though I've been, yeah, I still occasionally am sad and alone, um, it's different and I'm, I am grateful. I was really thinking about how I'm really grateful that, that I have regained my health, health with the help of doctors in the last year. And uh, so I don't take that for granted after having that, that painful experience last year and the recovery took about a month. So it was actually it was almost like the week before Christmas that I was finally feeling like I could comfortably resume activities so I don't take that for granted I'm very grateful to be more comfortable now so with the blessing of friends of course we know our friends are blessings right she gives us suggestions of ways that we can show them that we're grateful go on walks together make annual outings a tradition when a friend is sick, deliver a get well indulgence basket filled with bedside comforts, something irresistible to read and cough drops and things like that. And send or give friends flowers, just spur of the moment, bouquets from a grocery store or before you meet for lunch. Yeah, that's really nice. When there's a death in a in a friend's family instead of making a contribution in a deceased name or sending flowers to the funeral home wait a couple of days and send her a beautiful plant or bouquet after yeah it will comfort her more than you can imagine sometimes in those tough times too it's just the gift of silence and hugging and presence of someone right during tough times, put your friend's name on your prayer list. We talked about prayer recently. And she says, I believe the prayers of another woman are the most thoughtful, personal, and powerful gifts there are. 
I said that in one of the comments on that last video about spirituality. I didn't say it in the video, but I meant to say that I've had people say, I'll pray for you or you're in my prayers. And I think that is the most amazing gift because if someone's going to hold me to their spiritual God or, you know, just holding me in the good divine thoughts, I think that's the best gift you can give somebody. It's the, it's the most, um, it's probably the largest act of, of, um, good thoughts and love and yeah. So I agree with Sarah. Start or continue collections for a friend. Adding a new collectible each birthday or at holiday time. So maybe if you know a friend really likes something, you could start a little collection for them. When giving a cherished pal a gift, always give her something she'd never give herself an indulgence. That's a good idea too. Cook for your friends. During trying times while a friend is sick or under tremendous stress, double a recipe and deliver a casserole to her home. Above all, let your friends know how much you love them. Tell them frequently how much you treasure the gift of their friendship. Sadly, significant others come and go. Children grow up, parents die, siblings are separated by distance, but our friends are the continuous threads that help hold our lives together. I would agree. And one of my friends, I know you're watching, she recently sent me the most special gift. There's a there's about three things in my life that have happened that have been so perfectly timed and the nicest thing that anybody could ever do. But she lives in another state and she got together this whole envelope of surprises, like gift certificates to places nearby and things that I like to do and and like a note about each one. And, and it came at such a time where I was so low and it, it just brought just like a rainbow in and like, like a little peak of sunshine. And so I love all these suggestions that Sarah has for, for honoring your friendships and, and especially in trying times for trying to be there. So she does say that friends are the jewels in our crown of contentment. Yeah, we all want to have friends and I think as you get older we talked about sort of finding your tribe earlier in the year but I think as we get older and we really come into our own and we know who we are and we're not afraid to express that that our friendships will change and and you may find yourself gravitating more to people that really align more with who you are and that you feel like you can be really comfortable with like you might have different friends that you do activities with and it doesn't go that deep. But for your real close friendships, you you might be looking for people that are, are really gonna be there and, and are gonna get you and are gonna like be there in good times and bad, right? So hopefully when you were thinking about your, your blessings, the friends came to mind. So we talked a little bit about the blessing of health, but I didn't read what Sarah said. Let's see if there's anything I want to share. The blessing will meditate on today's health. We can't buy good health, no matter how much money we have. That is true. We can purchase the best medical treatment available in the world, but good health is not for sale. Health is a priceless gift from spirit that most of us take for granted until we become sick. Health is not just the absence of sickness, she says. Good health is vitality, vigor, high energy, emotional equilibrium, mental clarity, and physical endurances. Endurance, yeah, I like that. These are the gifts to pray for, not just that your credit card purchases will be approved and that you won't have a sink full of d dishes, you know, she's talking about after Thanksgiving, right? And going out and shopping, but. I don't know if they even had that this year. In the older book, she has an entry called The Kindness of Strangers, and very similar to the list of things that she had for the friendship entry, this really made me think. And I told you I'm not so great at accepting help. And the other day, for instance, 
I'm bringing some stuff over to my storage unit and it's on the second floor. It's a pain in the butt to do it and I was loading up a cart and this gentleman was there and he said, do you need some help? Are you going up to the second floor? And I don't know, I'm always, I guess I'm always just sort of suspicious of strangers anyway. So I just said, no, 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 I, you know, I've done this many times, it's fine, but thank you. But afterwards I'm thinking, how nice. I actually should have been more appreciative that he even, I just said, thank you, I sort of brushed it off, but that was super generous of him to ask. And actually it probably would have been great and would have made it go faster, but like I said, I'm, I'm sort of hesitant about strangers, but I like what Sarah says about strangers because yeah, you can be kind to strangers or you can accept their kindness too. From this day forward, start becoming consciously aware of your encounters with strangers. Look for them, smile, make eye contact, strike up a conversation, you never know. Even if it's not an angelic encounter, it might be a celestial moment. <laughs> Several years ago, I was in New York hosting a week of Victorian lectures at Macy's. All right, I'm not going to read this whole thing. She talks about somebody that helped her get a cab and everything. Okay, you can read that if you want. It's in the old book on November 19th. She goes on to say, never turn down a stranger's off offer of help, like I did the other day, unless you're alone in a dark, secluded place where you wouldn't, where you shouldn't be in the first place. Well, yeah, that would be like, really be suspicious of strangers then. Life is hard for many women, but gradually I'm becoming aware that it's really not as hard as we make it. One of the reasons real life is difficult is that we don't ask for assistance from family, friends, coworkers, and even strangers. We feel uncomfortable as if asking for help is confirmation that we're completely inept. Yeah, we talked about that. And go back and watch that ask, ask, ask entry from the summer. Okay, be kind. So here's her list of things. Be kind to strangers. Let strangers be kind to you. Think of it as positive exchange of comfort and compassion in the circle of life. Remember, as St. Paul reminds us, quote, some have encountered angels unaware, and some of us have encountered them without knowing, sending them away before receiving their blessings. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You never know. I, I find myself, I'm very friendly as it is, but I usually try to talk to people, especially service people. I know how hard they're working just from my own experience working retail and other jobs. So a lot of times I will ask them, I don't know, I just, I'm just friendly. And I remember being in a conversation with some friends one time and, and the conversation was that they were just complaining about how rude people were, you know, whenever they were at a store or whatever, that, you know, people that were waiting on them. And, and I wasn't contributing to the conversation and, and they came to me and they said, don't you, don't you have any thoughts on that? And I just said, I don't, I'm not really having that experience. I, I feel like people are, people are nice to me. <laughs> and it's probably, and I'm not saying that they they were being rude and that's why they were getting rudeness back. But I think if you exude friendliness, whether you're never going to see that person again or not, then it, it comes back to you. I think. Most people that I talk to, even at the grocery store, I always try to say something to the worker. And, um, you know, like, even if it's like, oh, have you ever tried these? Like, if I'm getting something and I don't know, I just, I just try to be nice. Um, but I am, yeah, I think if, if a stranger offers to help me, I'm a little bit hesitant just because I'm like sort of wary of strangers in that respect. But if I'm the one initiating, I guess I feel more comfortable. And then there was also, blessed be the tides that the ties that bind, which is about family. And when we think of holidays, we probably think of families, right? Family members. And Sarah makes a good point. You might have a little bit of dread. Maybe there's that one relative or it's the in-laws or some sort of discomfort in the family dynamic. And so, that can come up when you're thinking about family and the ties that bind. She has another list of things. 
for family members, just like we had for friends and strangers. Be creative with your gestures. If you have a favorite meditation book, get one for your sister and your mother. Tell them that when you read yours, you'll be think when you read yours, you'll be thinking of them. Become an in invariant clipper of articles that will interest or amuse family members. You know, my dad does that. He's always sending me articles and they're usually really funny. They make me laugh or they're, they're interesting and he thinks of me, so I like that. Um, every couple of weeks, usually when I settle accounts, she says, I'll drop them in the mail and those are the articles she's talking about. You don't have to write more than thought you might like this with the article. The gesture takes a total of five minutes from clipping to putting on a stamp. If you live away from family members, schedule telephone calls on a regular basis. Elderly parents need the reassurance of a weekly check-in that they can count on and look forward to. It is kind of good to schedule those, don't you think? We all remember the children in our extended families around the holidays, but it takes a little extra effort to remember the kids' birthdays. There are more hurt and silent feelings smoldering over one omitted gesture than you can imagine. Try to make the effort. Not having time or, quote, meaning to really doesn't count. None of us have time. All of us mean to. We all can do it once we make thoughtfulness easy with a system. Yeah, so it could be a matter of having a planner or having, you know, they actually have those little books that you can there's little um it's like a, at a hallmark store you could buy a little binder and you can put the cards in there for each month and you have the dates so maybe it's a matter of setting up that i like this too share family stories record them on audio tape so they won't get lost or now i guess it would be video or digital this is the older book i'm reading from so especially have your parents and grandparents record their memories after they're gone, the sound of, of a voice will break your heart, but it will also heal your soul. Go through your old family photographs and have copies made for everyone. Start an extended family video record. Try to get together annually. Yeah, so those are some things to think about. I like sharing family stories. You know, there's one thing about me I will I, I'm unforgettable. <laughs> I know the stories in the family about Aunt Carolyn are are uh, I don't know if I should say they're like notorious or but they will live forever. <laughs> it's just things I've done that they like to bring it up and and embarrass me too, but I just go along with it. It's funny. I t tend to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Or, or I just don't have any sort of fear of doing like a giant cannonball. And I mean, <laughs> so, so yeah. When they share stories, I'm sure that they laugh about me and things that I've done. But I like asking my dad about things too. I hope you have your parents or a parent to, to ask them things. And you might find that they love to tell you things. My dad loves to talk about his childhood. And I like to just ask him interesting things about you know well, what was your car like and and um you know where was your favorite place to go swimming and i just i love it. i love hearing all the things or even more serious like i was asking him recently about what was it like when your dad died you know were you there because i was about five years old when his father died and and so i said you know did did, were you there? Did How did you feel? You know, things like that. So it's interesting when you have that adult relationship where you can actually ask your parent about things that are, that are a little deeper that you would never have asked as a kid. So we have friends, we have health, we have family. Hopefully you had other things like maybe your uh, pets too. She has an entry on the 28th, but I'll read it today because it is, uh, well, it's tomorrow, but it was about Thanksgiving and it was called True Thanksgiving. And she is talking about the, the turkey being in the oven and, you know, the dear ones are there. This is good. This is very good. She says, let us hold fast to this authentic moment of simple abundance. Let us cherish this feeling of complete contentment. Let us rejoice and praise the giver of all goods. Come, my thankful sisters, come. 
Offer grace for the bounty of goodness. Raise the song of harvest home, the glass of good cheer, the heart overflowing with joy. We have so much for which to be thankful. So much about which to smile, so much to share. So much that in this season of plenty, we can embrace the season of relinquishment. All we have is all we need. That's a beautiful thing. You could almost have read that at the Thanksgiving table. Yeah. There was another entry about prosperity that I wanted to read too talk about anyway because obviously hopefully you're happy for the fact that you have a home and that you hopefully have an income and maybe you're happy for the things that you have and we've talked so much about success about authentic success and worldly success and we've talked about money and we've talked about simplicity in terms of money and what the real prosperity of living is which is I'm assuming what she's gonna tell us in these these are challenging times in which we live, she says, but we are not the only generation to have known difficult days. It is comforting to realize that others before us have persevered and prospered. Yeah, think about what they went through. She talks about the depression here. When you see the, the uh, pictures and sometimes they have some videos of people and, well, I guess it's similar to now with people in the lines for food, but, uh, you know, I do, I do know that there were people that were just living in wherever they could find along the road because they just had lost everything. Um, what's fallen through the cracks of social and domestic history is the very sacred need to keep up a woman's morale on the home front through whatever social, political, or economic turmoil or upheaval we're going through. Now, we talked about having grace under pressure recently. Women have always cared for the world one way or another, but we still don't know how to take care of ourselves. We've been learning that a lot this year, right? We've been, we've been encouraged by Sarah to take time for ourselves, go on creative excursions, pursue our interests and hobbies, and we've talked about so much. We will not and cannot forget the le legacy of loved, loved ones, love passed down to us, our daughters and granddaughters from generations of beautiful, brave, and heroic women over the last centuries. Yeah. So this Thanksgiving, I will celebrate and consecrate that intangible spirit, indom wait, indomitable spirit that every, with every word in my dictionary, so I don't, okay, I just lost that sentence, but <laughs> to be called to be a caretaker is the most beautiful compliment and description of my work in the world than I can imagine. So I would think that Sarah is saying that part of her prosperity of living is being a caretaker. What do you think? Do you get do you get joy and satisfaction out of taking care of people? Maybe you took care of your kids or you're taking care of them now or you're taking care of of your your older relatives now. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that would be something to be thankful for. I, had, I hope that you had a nice holiday, if it was something that you celebrated, and I hope that you can remember all these things to be grateful for and to show your gratitude not only at Thanksgiving, but through the year. I think Sarah gave us some really great examples of things that we can do for our friends and for our family and, and uh, even for strangers. <laughs> So thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you feel like this inspired you to maybe make a schedule of things. I forgot to say when we were talking about the doing things for friends, uh, two years ago I did. I actually did have a bunch of things I wanted to do. And maybe this was more along the lines of the strangers or people in my past. I made a list of people from my past, like my fourth grade teacher and my old ballet teacher and a, a mentor that I had in college. And 
I made a list of those people that I haven't connected with in some of them 30, 35 years. And I wrote them all. And I did like one a month. So there were about six of them. And and I just reached out and I just wrote them a, a letter of thanks and I wanted them to know that they had affected my life positively. And maybe you might like that idea. And now they are sort of strangers to me since like fourth grade was so long ago. But, and I was really hoping, I was really hoping my fourth grade teacher would write back to me, but she didn't, I don't know. But my dad said that as a teacher, he, he's gotten a lot of letters through the years. He said he does usually try to respond, but she didn't write me back. But um, but I hope, but it doesn't matter. I wasn't writing to get a response. I just wanted to express my gratitude. But I do hope that that touched other people positively for them to know that I remembered them and that even if 20 years or more had gone by, that they really positively affected my life. So that sort of ties in. And maybe you might think about no, the whole month of November or even just Thanksgiving week in the future to think about all the people and ways that you can express thanks. At my office job this past week, one of the patients came in and she gave me, she I, I barely really know her. I've seen her you know, for the last month or so and she's very sweet, but she brought me a thank you note and she gave me this lovely lavender lotion and and a part of me thought, like, I wonder if she, if this is just her way, like if everywhere she goes, she does this all year round, or maybe she is just doing it like, consciously for Thanksgiving, but it totally touched me. And like I said, it's not like, I, I don't feel like I've done anything really out of the ordinary, but it is nice in a newer job too, to feel appreciated and that people are, are glad you're there. So, so maybe you can think of for 2021, a way to to positively connect with family with friends with strangers or people that you encounter maybe at businesses and just maybe even if it's just one one thing a month that would that would you know would brighten somebody's day because you know that's going to positively affect you too and you'll be excited to do it so anyway i'm rambling but a lot to think about with this one Thank you for being on the channel here with me. Love to you all, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.